Sean Lang here with the Fightly Report, and we are excited to be back on the road here again in the summer of 2021. While well, we're getting there, and uh, we are now at Dominion MMA out in Oswego, Illinois. And next to me is Tyler Sugarfree Scott. Talk about obviously your latest fight, Saijo Mizaki. You guys had this fight at Cage Fanatic 31, crossed the line. A big event, you know, a big fight for you. He's also uh, the owner of Imazaki MMA, which is also in Illinois. So, and then you are the manager of Dominion MMA. So talk about that. Uh, how did a fight come about and why did you feel like uh, you had to challenge him? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good fight. Uh, it was one that I was excited for for a long time. Um, there was a couple times that it got thrown out to mm -hmm. me throughout the amateur career. Um, but for one reason or another, it, it always kind of fell through. But I always liked the idea of it because he's, like you said, he's a, an owner of a karate school, and I come from a karate background myself. And I thought now the, the tale was even better, is that he runs a school, Miyagi-Do, and now here I got Cobra Kai <laughs> over here as I'm the head coach at, the, at Dominion here. Um, so I, I thought it would be a, a, you know, a great striking match was mm -hmm. kind of the plan going into it. Obviously the fight went a little bit differently, um, but uh, still a really tough guy and uh, a good guy too. And, and just a, a great uh, matchup between two uh, high level martial artists. The fight was called verbal uh, submission due to strikes. How did you feel about that finish? Yeah, I, I didn't hear him uh, verbally tap, but I mean, it must've happened. Um, but. Uh, it was good, you know, I would have been happier with the, uh, if I would have sank in the, the triangle in the sure. first round, um, if I had a couple more seconds, I think I would have got it, but, um, but you know, a, a TKO is a TKO, so I uh, can, can never complain about a finish. So. I felt like during the fight he showed off he is a crafty veteran, you know, he was fighting off your submissions and he was going for a couple submissions of his own, were you felt in any trouble at all, or? Not really. Uh, I mean, he, he, he was really strong. He was a lot stronger than I thought. His hands were huge. His grip strength was good. So when he locked up something, it was hard for me to get out of it. Um, but he was making, you know, he, he was a, a veteran at finding things, um, but a rookie at some things at, at finishing it. He didn't really control the hips at all. So even yeah. though he might have locked down an arm, I kind of had free movement still. So mm -hmm. he slowed me, but he didn't really stop me or, or threaten me too much. Uh, yeah. From the show. yeah, you feel like he overcommitted at all when he was going for like that arm bar or rather like Chimera? De I'm definitely sure it was a lot more was strength yeah. and technique based. Um, and like, that's not too surprising. He's definitely more of a striker. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, as, I, as I was too, um, but uh, yeah, he kind of overcommitted on things and used a lot of muscle. So I was, I was just trying to, you know, remain sure. calm, composed, and kind of just figure my way out of it. So. You guys talk after the fight at all? Because I know, you know, Actually, obviously you're the head coach yeah. of Dominion. You know, he's a charger of Mazaki, maybe form some kind of union or alliance, <laughs> temporary as it may be. Well, we, we did, uh, you know, he, he did mention, you know, come out there and train anytime okay. uh, would be great. Uh, we actually ran into each other at the after party uh, okay. at the fight and, uh, and you know, kind of had a, had a couple of drinks and, and laughed about it. So, nice. uh, so it's pretty good. He's, like I said, he's a really good guy, really respectful and so yes. no, nothing bad to say about the Sejo at all. Definitely, and we saw you compete at Elite Amateur Fight League leading up to this, you know, obviously you had good success there. So it was just crazy to imagine, like, you know, obviously you have that last fight and then the, the whole world <laughs> kind of just closes. Shut down. Yeah, just shut down. I mean, <coughs> you had about six fights, you said, that, that were scheduled and they were, they were canceled, either the card canceled, your opponent canceled during that duration. Yeah. And that, I, couldn't, I can't believe that June of 2019 was your last fight before your, uh, Read your emergency yeah, in, cage, for, in yeah. cage aggression. So yeah, it was crazy. Well, in in the EFL fight, mm -hmm. I actually ended up breaking right. my left hand early in the second round mm -hmm. uh, of that finals, and you know I didn't end up still winning unanimous decision um, the whole way through. But that put me on the sidelines for you know six months. So then I I got surgery you know late July, and then I was pretty much out rehabbing and everything up, up until January. So then came the new year, and then I was getting back into it, and I took a Muay Thai fight to kind of get my feet wet and just get used to the, the grind yes. again. And then as soon as I locked in uh, a pro debut fight, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So show got canceled, and then I moved on to another show. Had a show, had an opponent canceled. Three, so there was uh, six different shows I got scheduled for uh, all the way from March to June. Uh, and with four different confirmed opponents, but wow. either, you know, I think there was two times the opponent dropped out and like four times that the whole show uh, completely canceled. Uh, so, so it was definitely uh, a process getting in there and I got lucky. I was 
Well, I don't want to say lucky because actually I was told by Mike Goodwin, the promoter, that I got it because I stayed on top of him. I was persistent. Um, yes. you know, I, 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 everyone says they want to fight, but I said it every day, every day, mm -hmm. every day, and then I got, and then I got the fight. So definitely. And then talk about caged aggression, like that promotion. How do you feel about performing there? It was November of 2020, and this is a big show. They have a you know great production. You're driving out to Iowa. But then they put you in with Trace and Geckles, you know, who obviously he's a tough, tough competitor, you know, trained at the MMA lab on Arizona. And, you know, I'm sure, I don't think you guys have ran into each other in terms of like hand a fight schedule, but you had seen him, you know, doing the regional events, would it be XFL? Yeah, I knew else? his gym for sure yeah. at the time because uh, uh, he uh, was, you know, kind of out um, up by the Rockford area yeah. before that. So, you know, I was scheduled to fight some of his teammates and stuff before, but uh, Trace is a super tough guy, great wrestler. Now he's at an even greater camp, you know, so uh, a lot of stuff with that. Um, still, I still think I beat him eight out of ten times, nine right. out of ten times. Uh, however, that was his night, not to take anything away from mm -hmm. him. Uh, There's just a lot of things that kind of led up to it. Again, I don't want to make any excuses, but sure. from you know March all the way to November, I was basically in camp that whole time. So by the end of that, I was burnt out. You know, mentally, physically, I was great. I was in the right. best. I was in the best shape, including all of my fights after that. I felt the best physically for that fight, but mentally, it was weird stepping into the cage and not being there. It was right. almost like an out-of-body zen experience, which uh, was calming, but unfortunately it meant I wasn't able to turn it on, and, and Trace did what he did, and he locked up the choke super fast, and I felt okay, and the next thing I knew, I, you know, I woke up. But uh, um, it was a great lesson uh, to learn that, you know, at the pro level, it's just yes. like that. You, it's, you can't skate by and wait to get woken up. I used to tell myself I'm a slow starter. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I'm re rewiring my brain. I'm not a slow starter, I'm a fast starter. I just haven't shown you that. Right, That's right. all it is. So, um, so the fights after that, it's been uh, just as much physical preparation, but you know, ten times the mental preparation that I did before, um, because that's really uh, what, what where I noticed uh, the, the lack of preparation was. Yeah, you got the opportunity to step back in there after your first personal fight against Pete Keepers, and you got the big finish. You yeah. know, talk three, about that as well. That's a yeah, big. Yeah, three three weeks later, uh, I, you know, I came out. I lost the trace fight, but I was mm -hmm. uh, I was not hurt. You know, there was like three strikes thrown that whole fight, uh, right. and then we went to the ground and locked up a choke. So I felt physically completely fine, uh, and I was still in shape. So you know, I said, "Hey, give me whoever. I'm I'm like I'm ready to go." Mm -hmm. Let's go, please give me another shot so I can show you what I can do. And, uh, and I got Pete Keepers, another super tough guy. I believe he had like a 10 and two record or something mm -hmm. like that, amateur, uh, and then was just coming off of his first pro uh, debut as well. So uh, it hit super hard, as I found out. Right. Uh, so again, and this is you know kind of a, a little um, test for me is that, uh, or, or I guess um, trial and error is the words I was looking for is that uh, I went in there and I noticed I was a little slow, I was a little flat-footed again, which caught me to get, uh, which led me to get caught with a couple mm -hmm. of hard shots. And I've been caught with shots in amateur before, but I wasn't ever caught with something that put me mm -hmm. down like, uh, like Pete Keepers did. I, th I think I got dropped like three times in that first minute, but uh, again, stayed composed. And I remember there's a second where I'm like, oh yeah, we're fighting, all right? right. So and then I came on, I turned it on from there. And, and again, it was, I ended up retaking the rest of that first round. Uh, I think if I had 10 more seconds, I would have uh, knocked him out on the cage. Uh, um, when I watched, I didn't notice it at the time, but when I watched it back, he was completely done on the cage. He was right. exhausted, breathing, you know, and all, at the time I was thinking, I'm tired. But, uh, <laughs> but now watching it, I could see that. And then, yeah, second round, went back after it and, uh, and got the, the TKO via elbows. So. Definitely, that had to feel great, man. Felt really great to get that, get that pro win. Definitely. And then, you know, moving forward now, when can we see you fight again? I know cage aggression is going to come, come back until the fall. Um, you know, we have more events opening up, but they do require to travel out of state. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, we sure. used to have fights here in Oswego not too long ago, maybe a decade ago. Yeah. So it's just crazy how now everything's changed. Right, you know, so uh, Illinois is still pretty closed down. You know, right. uh, Illinois venues are starting to kind of look a little bit mm -hmm. around the border and get some things going. So, you know, Cage Digression is a great promotion. I can't wait to fight for them again. Um, but I know their show, next show is not until October. So uh, in the meantime, if something good comes up, you mm -hmm. know, I've been in, uh, in talks with Fight Card uh, okay. Entertainment a little bit too. Um, I know they're, they're doing a card this month that has Pro-Am. The next card is only Am, but they're saying that they want to throw another uh, Pro card in there um, sometime this summer. So uh, that might be a possibility as well. Nice. Otherwise, uh, you know, promoters, if the right matchup comes by, uh, I put butts in seats. So 
Definitely. Yeah, you do have a huge yeah. following, so talk about that. Uh, you know, you guys have a lot of people that support you here from Dominion MMA. Uh, you know, you have families that they support the children and they all support you guys when you go out to fight yeah. at these events. So how, how amazing is that? Uh, it's awesome to, you know, be a role model for kids and for them to kind of return it mm -hmm. to, you know, it's that, that extra motivation because you, you tell, the, you tell the, your students, whether they're kids or adults, you, you tell them to not give up. So when you right. see them in the seat there, man, you can't give up. You've, mm -hmm. been, you've been preaching it, so now you got to show it too. Yeah. Um, but just huge support, uh, yeah, from Dominion and in general. You know, I've been fighting for forever. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm an old man in the game in, in Illinois here. Uh, so, I, you know, I already had a following, but once coming to Dominion, you know, the owners, uh, David and Susanna Chacon, have been uh, more than uh, supportive of not only uh, helping further the school, but uh, helping further my fight career and, and uh, along with that. So nice. um, between, you know, their support and, uh, you know, the students' support and then the rest of the fans, it's just been overwhelming. Uh, you know, I've been uh, just showered with, with, with support uh, over the last few fights, which, which has been totally amazing. So thank you guys. Excellent. And, you know, I talk about the Lead Anniversary Fight League. Obviously, you fought for them, you know, you with Team Illinois, you beat Valenti Assas. And then, like afterwards, you got to meet like Daniel Monterley. Can you tell us that story? Uh, because you didn't recognize <laughs> who he was. <laughs> it was one of those things where I know that. I, so yeah, uh, yeah, Professor Monterley was there, and I'd actually I'd trained with him one time uh, previously years okay. ago. So I kept, I had that you know uh, feeling in my head. I'm like, man, I've seen that guy. But what, what gym is he from? What gym right. is he from? And to be fair, Professor, I had just been in a cage fight and was punched in the face <laughs> several times. So maybe that CTE yes. was was stopping me from recognizing right away. And then we had talked for like a good half hour. And then I went and sat down. And then I was like, that's Professor Wander. Like, yeah, so, yes. so I walked back. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, Professor. Like <laughs> we've been talking, but I couldn't put it together until now. So. Uh, just one of those things. I'm, I've always been really good at remembering faces, terrible with names in general. But, uh, uh, but yeah, that one was uh, probably one of my yeah. worst, yeah, worst mm -hmm. mistakes. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, in the past with EAFL, you had like basically one coach or one you know, uh, group of coaches would be selected, but everybody got to bring their own coach from their team this time around. Yeah. So like, what do you think about that difference when you got the chance to compete? Uh, I liked it. You know, um, I don't uh, necessarily like uh, you know working with a coach that I I haven't worked with right. before. You know, uh, and even then, you know, my style is a little bit different. You know, I've been doing it so long that I'm one of those guys that kind of tailor my own game plan, mm -hmm. uh, and then I have coaches that kind of help me um, kind of fine tune those those sure. skills and and the way it goes. So uh, just like you know, because because uh, I'm a coach myself, so I kind of understand the game planning mm -hmm. and the strategies and, you know, the rock, paper, scissors method right. of martial arts of what beats what and when it beats it. Um, so then it's, uh, I kind of come up with this for myself and I kind of uh, talk it over with some of my mm -hmm. coaches and if we'll, when we agree upon it and then it's just, you know, making sure that I'm uh, being held accountable to those things right. during training. Definitely. And we have Elite Amateur Fight League, Steel City Showdown, so talk about that. I mean, uh, the Real Cat Stadium, how excited that's, are you? That's going to be have awesome. something really close to home. That's going to be yeah. awesome. Um, you know, I'm a big supporter of the EFL. They did a lot for uh, my career. Jesse's mm -hmm. a great promoter. Um, and, you know, uh, and that's one, honestly, better than a lot of pro shows that I've ever been to, just the yes. level of their promotion. It's been it's amazing. So uh, super excited that I've got two of my amateur fighters uh, now mm -hmm. uh, fighting on there, one who has already debuted on the EFL once before, okay. Charlie Nellinger. Uh, and then uh, Richard Napier making his uh, EFL debut. It'll be his second uh, MMA fight. So both have super tough matchups, uh, uh, yep. which is the way we like it here mm -hmm. at Dominion MMA. So uh, that's what we want. We want to see get see these guys tested, and, and EFL is a perfect venue for that to happen. Yeah, definitely after the season you had where Illinois did go to the finals, although it fell short to Team Arizona. Definitely. That was a, that was a crazy ride, too. <laughs> I entered that tournament as an alternate right. and then ended up taking the title. So. Nice, so, nice. And anything can happen, you know, it just yeah. depends on what, uh, rolling with what opportunities present itself. For sure. And, you know, talk, tell everybody where they can catch you on social media. And if anybody wants to train at Dominion MMA, tell them about it. Yeah, uh, hit up Dominion Martial Arts. Uh, we have our Instagram at Dominion Martial Arts. Uh, we have uh, just DominionMartialArts.com if you're looking for that. Uh, if you want to follow me specifically, it's at Sugar Free Scott. That is sugar, not sugar. No hard R, Coach Brian. Just the sugar, uh, all right? Uh, all one word.
Definitely sugar-free Scott, I love it. And also, you know, talk about that. You had type 1 diabetes as a child. That's where you get your nickname from. It, it is, it's not the best nickname, but you know what? You never really get to pick uh, your nicknames is my opinion. So uh, I had a coach that used to joke uh, that I chose diabetes, which is right. not the case because I'm type 1 diabetic. Uh, but that was the running gag, so then it slowly became this downfall of being the diabolical diabetic, and then it became uh, sugar-free, right. and, and that kind of stuck, because at the time, uh, I think Sugar Rashad uh, was the champion, yes. too. So, uh, so I kind of stuck, and then, you know, at one point uh, during my fight career, I noticed that more people recognized me as sugar-free than they did as, <laughs> as Tyler, and I was just like, yeah, well, let's, let's lean into it at this point. So. Definitely. Anyone you out there you want to fight at 170, like, that makes sense to you, or... Well, Sejo was the one that I, I called out and I wanted. That's right. the only fight that I've ever called out, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to have gotten it. So, um, you know, I definitely want to run it back with Trace. Um, uh, not necessarily, uh, there's a couple things I want to fine tune, and I kind of, sure. I think uh, both of us at such a high level, uh, you know, I think after, after this recent fight, me and him are both going to be ranked number one and number two in Illinois at welterweight. So I think that's a, a level we want to wait a little bit until mm -hmm. we, uh, you know, can both kind of cash in on, on that matchup a little bit. Makes so. sense. I would love to see every match. Awesome. Me too. Me too. Me too. <laughs> but we've got to have the, th the money's right for it too. So. Tyler, sure, free Scott. appreciate you being on the Fight Report, my friend, and thank you for welcoming us to Dominion MMA. Fight Report is back on the road. One of many gyms we'll be visiting uh, this summer, and you can catch uh, Tyler Scott on What's up, everyone? This is host Sean Lennon with the Fight Report. I want to remind you that UFC 263 is this Saturday night. Make sure to come out to Mullen 7301 Northwestern Avenue to check us out for the Fight Report remote. We're going to be there at 7.30 p.m., going live by 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We have our live remote predictions for the podcast, experts, and more. Also, head over to 7301 Northwestern Avenue for the fight, no cover, early arrival recommended, food and drink specials, and a big shout out to Mullen Sports Bar and Grill for having us once again for UFC 263. Head over to fightly.com for more exclusive content, including exclusive interviews and articles. I'm your host, Sean Lennon. See you Saturday night for UFC 263.